Let's add in these facilities rather than districts. So I'll deselect district and then I'll select facility. We already changed our layout around, so let's go ahead and update the graph. We can see that when we add in the data by facility, for these different data elements, we have a lot of different data values. This chart is actually quite difficult to read. I can use these triple arrows here to expand the chart. Even still, when I do that, it's still a bit difficult to read. There's a lot of information present. Let's try and clean this up a little bit. Just like the pivot table, the chart also has options. We can click on the options and we can see a number of different options available to us. The first thing we can do is remove the show values selection. This will remove these number values that are present on the graph currently. The next thing we can do is hide the empty categories. Remember, we selected organization units as our categories. This means that we will be able to hide any organization units that don't have any data values for ANC first or fourth visit. If we look at the graph a bit, we can see that there are some organization units that don't actually have any data values, so it will be useful to remove these from the graph. The next thing we can do is give the axes titles. Typically, you want your graphs to stand out by themselves without a lot of additional interpretation. We can see that in the axes, we can add titles to the range and domain. This once again differs from the category and the series. The reason that we have multiple terminologies here is because we support a variety of different graph types, and these can be output in a variety of different ways. We'll discuss this in a little more detail as we go through this session. For a horizontal bar chart like we have right now, we will define the range as the y-axis and the domain as the x-axis. So for this particular example, we can say that the range is the number of ANC visits and the domain is simply the organization unit name, which in this case is the facility. We also want to give the chart an appropriate title. Right now it's filtered out our selection of the last 12 months. We would like to display instead a title at the top of the chart, rather than these month names. One final thing that we might want to do is sort the chart. We can sort the chart from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. Let's just pick one for this example. Once we've selected our different chart options, we can click update. We can see now that this chart is a lot easier to read. We can quickly identify those facilities that have the lowest number of visits versus those facilities that have the highest number of visits. We can also read the chart a lot more easier than before. We can see the title at the top, allowing the chart to now stand on its own, and we can see those periods that we've selected underneath still. Now that we've covered some of the features of the data visualizer, let's go through another example.